Hello everyone, welcome to my African Music Conversations. I am Joe Kunuji. I got to talk to Mandisi Diankis and it was indeed an interesting conversation. In case you don't know Mandisi, he is one of South Africa's finest musicians and he is a singer, a composer, a trumpet player and a lot more. Some describe him as a poet and I definitely agree that he's a musician who does a lot more with his music than entertainment. I like to describe his music as music for social change. And indeed, his music captures a lot about his personality and his identity. He shared his thoughts about the idea of preserving African musical heritage as being problematic. He also spoke about music and identity, his approach to composition and his approach to practicing. This is the first of the two videos that I made from our conversation. Do stay tuned and kindly subscribe for more exciting videos on African musics. My name is Mandy Sikyangins and I'm an artist. I come from a musical family, I guess. That, that, when, when, you, when, when you look at it now, you, you sort of think, how did it all start? But for me, it started naturally. You know, it was, it, music was is as natural in my household as anything that other people do. So by the time I knew that I was a musician, I had been doing music for a very long time because I come from a big family and um, you know, we used to just take out a hymn book and sing, you know. Uh, my sisters and cousins started playing instruments before me, so I was just following them. So that's what I mean when I'm saying, <clears throat> by the time I realized what I was doing, I was too late. You know, um, from a very young age, when, 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 when I decided that, okay, music was what I was going to do, I remember making a conscious effort of wanting to be a, a good musician, you know, because for me, my mentors, especially my mentors earlier on, were, were, were guys from the township who instilled hard work. So for me, in order for you to be a good musician, I equated with working hard. I, I didn't know what talent was. I didn't know gifts. You know, for me, it was if you spent enough time on your craft, on your instrument, on your theory or whatever that you needed to spend time on, you were going to be good. So that's what I, I, I did. You know, I boxed myself and, 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 and I spent time practicing, reading, um, listening to music. You know, um, of course, in my earlier years, it was classical music, you know. So I wanted to play all the concertos that I could play, sonatas, whatever. You know, I listened to orchestras and I heard myself playing in, in those orchestras. So I was very, from a very young age, I was motivated. I was just motivated to work. I still, today, I, I, I think hard work, you know, um, will get you there. Yeah, I come from a town called Port Elizabeth. It's right on the coast um, of South Africa. So from, from Cape Town, where we are, it's about six, seven hours drive along the N2. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a cosmopolitan city. But within all South African cities, you have things we call townships. It's where black people, black working class live. It's a place of great poverty, you know but they're also a place of life. Americans would call it the hood. It's where we grew up, yeah. The way I like to think of my music, and, and this has evolved through time, you know, and just constantly working on music and thinking about music. So sometimes I get very, um, so bogged down in my thoughts because I studied classical music, I studied jazz, you know, um, um, uh, I played African music, you know, the, the traditional African music, you know. I played marimbas and drums and all those things. And for me, I think in this day and age, you describe your music according to your identity. How do you, how do you see yourself? Who are you as an individual? Because for me, music comes from inside me, right? 
I use all of these things at my disposal. I use classical melodies, classical chords, jazz chords, jazz melodies, African chords, African melodies, um, the music from outside, music that I don't know because I listen to so much music, you know. And I use every single thing in my disposal. But what makes my music, therefore, have something that is different from the other is my identity. And one, I identify as a South African, as an African. I identify as a Kosa man. I identify as a Christian man. And so all of these things play part in how I then put out music. For me, I believe that, and, and other people have proven me wrong because it's, it's, it's not cast in stone, but I seek to do music which represent every part of me. So when you see me, you see a black man. So my music must be black, whatever that means. When you see me, you see an African man. I'm, I'm from a Corsa clan, you see. So if you're from South Africa, you then, you then understand certain nuances depending on culture. If you're from outside uh, uh, South Africa, you'd say that's South African music. But if you're from South Africa, you can pinpoint my music to a specific place. Because unlike when I was young and I wanted to do music for everybody and music that was everybody's music that encapsulated everything, as I grew, I realized that I had a certain duty as a musician. I needed to say something that was me. If people gravitate towards it, praise God. You know, it's fine. It's good. I, I love it. But one I do music for me. It's a, gift, it's a gift given to me. God gives me the gift of music. I don't know what people like, Doc. I can't say here and say, you, I, I don't even know what, what tickles your fancy musically. I might think I know, but I don't. How do I write then a song for an individual? You can't write songs for individuals but you can write a song that speaks to you and then hope that the mechanisms that make you human touch those people if the song has touched you. But I don't become specific in the nuances of writing. I'm writing, I don't write for, I write music that speaks to me, that's honest, that I can stand and say, I wrote that music at a certain moment in my life, this was happening, or I was trying to capture this, or I was trying to draw this, or I was trying to say this to me first, you see? And I think, as, especially young musicians, because I'm, I'm very interested in young musicians and in students, that's where we miss it. Because we want, we have this grand idea of music. We want to make music for everybody. But, but who's everybody? You don't know what everybody likes. If, if you study music throughout history, if you look at the music that captured people, it was not the music that was playing at that time. When the Beatles came, nobody was playing like the Beatles. When Queen were playing, nobody was playing like the Queen. You see, nobody did th those things on the piano and adding classical music with rock and punk and stuff like that. No one was doing it. When Adele came up, it was an era, people had said the era of live music is gone. You know, DJs were big. And Adele came and sang a ballad, her and the piano player. But because she was honest in what she was singing, people gravitated towards that, you know? So, so this thing of looking at trends and da 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 da, we miss, we, we miss, a, lot, we, we miss a lot of things, you know? Just do music that speaks to you. First of all, the, easier, the, easy, the easiest one is language. You know, the, easiest one, the, the easiest one to understand is language. I've chosen, uh, after some time, I've chosen to, to sing in Gestos, you know, in my, in, my, in my mother tongue, you know. Because if I am to stay true to what I've just said to you, that needed to happen. I needed to tell my story in the language at which it came to me. Because already, I didn't want to put a barrier. I come from a spiritual people. 
traditionally the Corsa people without the influence of Christianity, you know, which I'll talk about now. Traditionally, the Corsa people are our spiritual people who believe in the ancestors, in appeasing the ancestors. You know, we believe that we are born of people who are born of people who are born of people. So whenever we, when we represent ourselves, we are not just entities or silos. We come from a people who come from a people who come from a people. So me, my name is Mandy Sijangis. That's my, 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 my name and surname. But I come from the Lamini clan. Now, when I talk about my clan already, when I say Lamini, Lamini is an ancestor. And then I go, I'm, I am, I'm doing what? I'm tracing back a lineage. I'm calling people's names that made me who I am until I go to my father and my mother. And so those things, paying, so other, other cultures talk about paying homage and lineage or, or, or tribute. We, 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 we walk with it. So when you hear me speak or you hear me sing or you hear me on stage or you look at me on stage, I am not alone. I am accompanied by people whom it would not be possible to be on stage and do what I do without. So without the, 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 the influence of Christianity, because then there was a, the, the influence of Christianity. And Christianity, the reason why, especially the Corsa clan, because we're the first people to, to receive missionaries, you know, because we had so, those kind of similarities of the spirit. Because Christianity, we believe that we, 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 the Holy Spirit guides us. So all of these things are parallel in my life because I'm Christian, but also I'm of tradition. So I know that what I am and whatever I become. So, so number one, to start with, the easy, is that for me, I acknowledge that music is a gift. I have nothing to do with its creation. The creator gives me the gift of music. And so all I need to do, all I am is a conduit. I'm but a conduit of music. So that's why when I started writing songs, I was shy even putting my name on songs because they didn't feel like they were mine. I did, how, how, do, you, how, do, you, how do you compose a song, Doc? How, how, if, if you think about it in, 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 in what music is, how do you compose a song? You know, except acknowledging that it comes to you and it manifests through you. And so all you need to do, therefore, is to, is to be grateful for the gift and make sure that all you do as a conduit, you, 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 you then present it how it is meant to be presented. So that's why my emphasis is on practicing. My, emph my, my emphasis is getting yourself ready as a conduit to, be, to make sure that you receive these things and you can imagine getting a beautiful song and then singing it or playing it badly. You've heard it, you know these things happen. You see, a whole lot of these things for me have been simplified by always coming back to the gift. You know, so when I practice here, or I check out certain chords or doing whatever, I'm on YouTube and on my trumpet, I'm on, on guitar, whatever I'm doing, all I'm trying to do is to get myself ready for when the idea comes so that I can execute it the way that it needs to be executed. 